All right, are we ready to play Fiat again? I am, we haven't done that for a while. So that's what we'll do right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Rossi Oliver Man. This here is the old 1365 that we worked on last winter and started our Fiat tractor addiction, I suppose, that led to me having five in one year and now I have three that are complete, one for parts and we traded the one to get Freddy. So, Freddy the 1450, which we'll see after a while. But uh, everyone always wonders how the story goes like how did Oliver end up with importing these little tractors, okay? Because previous to these, they were importing these. These little David Browns, the 500 and the 600. And we can do, I don't know, I did kind of a video on this when I got it, but we could do maybe a more history video later on. But basically what happened was David Brown got the chance to market their tractors under their own name in America. So they pulled the plug on the deal with Oliver and then that left Oliver without this tractor. And people say, well, why did they even mess with these when they were making, you know, Super 55, 550 size tractors? Well, this, to my knowledge, was considerably cheaper than a Super 50 or a 550 would have been at the time. It, it came in, one guy told me it was so much cheaper, they got like the tractor and all the implements for less than a price of just the tractor, a, a 550. So that was why, this was like a lower cost option, I guess. It actually was cheaper just to import the whole tractor and sell it rebadged than it was to build their own. And the biggest thing I always heard, the reason why guys wanted these is because of differential lock. The Super 55 and 550 never had that, and that's what guys wanted in a utility tractor. So, anyway, David Brown pulls the plug. Now, what happens? Well, that is not exactly the only reason that Oliver ended up with the Fiat, because of something else that had happened. In that last video, the video where we talked about the 7300 combine, we talked about how Cockshut had become part of White Motor because White Motor bought Cockshut, mainly for the idea that, hey, they would get the combine factory, which would be building more state-of-the-art machines, and then they wouldn't have to tool up and design their own to compete. They would just already have that, so that's what they did. Cockshut is actually the reason that we have these Fiat tractors because Cockshut began the association with Fiat back in, like, the late... 50s, I think like 58 or 9, 59 I believe, they started importing the Fiat 411R. And I'll put in a picture of this. It is one of those things that I think it's so ugly it's cute. And I'd, I'd like to find one because it's, it's just a neat little feller. But, uh, and it was kind of a sharp color scheme. I like the two-tone, you know, harvest gold, I think they called it. And uh, then the red. But anyway, they started Cockshut in about 59 or so, began importing this 411R, which was a diesel, and a 411RG, which was the gas version. And so here you got this little utility tractor, and when White Motor steps into the picture in, I think, about 62, which would have been about the same time as this happening, the 1800A, series tractors you know so a little bit after this uh while these were still going on then cockshut comes into the white motor family at about the same time david brown pulls the plug and uh so in in uh 62 when they get cockshut then you know they I guess find out all the stuff that's going on and oh they're importing these tractors they were white motor was fine with the agreement so they kept kept letting it go on and so then this led to eventually 
the first model that people would think of when they think of a Oliver Fiat tractor, which is the 1250. And of course it was available as a cockshut version as well. They went from the 411R to now they redesigned it and they called it the 415. So we have the 415 and then they had a diesel and a gas version. The 415 is the same as a 1250 Oliver or a 1250 cockshut. So when you look at those two tractors, and I'll put pictures in because I don't have a 1250. I know where there's one I've been trying to buy, but haven't got that done yet. If you look at them from a distance, you would think that the gas and the diesel 1250 are identical, and the only difference is gas or diesel. Well, you're wrong because they are, <laughs> other from about here back, it's the same, but from here forward, there is nothing the same other than the looks of the sheet metal. So if you look at the if you look at the gas tractors of the 1250 the gas tractors used a frame rail setup and then had a little gas motor set in them whereas the diesel was made like this one where it was a stressed block where the block was part of the frame and as a result they both had different front ends so not even the front end components uh switch over and uh so basically you know, on the on the front half of the tractors between the two, other than the sheet metal, some of the only stuff that would interchange are like wheel hubs and stuff. I mean, the axle, everything was different. It just wasn't, I don't know why they did that. Uh, the gasoline engine of these, well, I guess, let me pause here a minute. We're going to go jumping around and I'm going to get this all jumbled up and make no sense of it. The 1250 when it started was available as a cockshut it was still harvest gold and red and then about the mid 60s or so was when they did away with the two-tone paint and everything became red you know that from the 50 series olivers my neighbors got one that's all red so that's a later one the earlier ones were the two-tone i like the two-tone i happen to i think that's a neat color combination but it uh went away and they became red. So then you have the 1250 Oliver and Cockshut, and it was available in different types of configurations. Uh, you could have actually a front wheel assist version, which I have never seen one. They made an orchard, a vineyard, and a high clearance version. There's a video on YouTube of a guy who's got two high clearance 1250s. That's kind of neat. He's got an Oliver and a cockshut one. And the little vineyard ones were just narrowed up little suckers. I mean, they were tiny, tiny <laughs> tread with type deals. Okay. So, now, back to this. Everything's different in front of the steering box. Okay, the gas engine in the 1250 was, I was always told it was an Italian military surplus engine. And as a result, it was not much. Uh, it was four cylinders, and, and it had, it was four cylinder engine, it had uh, a downdraft carburetor, believe it or not. And uh, it was... It was just a an oddball little thing, and what happened is eventually the parts went away, and there just was no service parts really available in quick order. <laughs> Not having any of the pieces is a lot of what the trouble was, I think, with the with the gas one, like points and all that. Even it just was not a. It wasn't something that they kept up with. I don't know why they wouldn't, you know. I guess they just got a good deal on those motors or something, but another oddity, I guess I should say, before I get too far away about that 1250, uh, it's 24 volt, I guess because it was military surplus, but 24 volt electrical system, and that, I think, was probably its biggest killer too, because that just was not a common thing. 24 volt, it didn't really need to be, it's just because that's the way it was, and, uh, so it had a lot of a lot of problems and so then that takes you to the diesel the diesel was probably a little bit better maybe slightly not really <laughs> so the diesel engine 
was a four cylinder engine and maybe slightly better, but not really that great. I think it was pretty well known for head gaskets failing and rod and main bearing problems. And it just was not what it should have been. The little tractors are cute as a button. And I mean, they, they're fun to drive in that, but they're just not, they just did not have the longevity. I'm really trying to get one because I'd like to have one just because you don't see that many saved. And I got Freddy the 1450, which is the big brother we'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, uh, the the diesels, like I said earlier, the, the gas ones a lot of times could maybe be repowered, but when a diesel was done, it was pretty well toast because how are you gonna repower a stressed block engine when you got to deal with the front end and all that? If they did do it, I'm, I'm sure it was a cobble job because you'd have sheet metal troubles and all that. So that's a, <laughs> yeah. So the 1250, although cute, was full of sadness and it did not give these tractors a good reputation uh which is sad because the later ones like this really are excellent so let's go over and now we will go on and talk about freddy which is a 1450 which is the big brother we're still in the mid 60s remember where you know we're in the 50 series of the larger oliver tractors so that's where we are so let's go look at freddy and we'll continue our story oh look at freddy in all his glory in the sunshine so the when the tractors were coming out and being sold the 1250 <laughs> obviously they did not have trouble immediately and they were selling pretty good i mean a lot so they decided okay let's continue on this train of success and let's go ahead and get another size so that's where this comes in this is the 1450 which was the same as the 615 fiat it was a just the bigger size fiat that they were selling over there and there are a lot of them that were over there in the original country and uh i got a viewer uh who is emailing me and stuff from australia and he says there's a ton of them down there like in salvage yards and stuff i mean so the 615 fiat was uh, a decent ish tractor and much better than the 1250 size or the 415 i should say so anyway they made this uh imported this 615 and made the styling it, it was pretty well like the 1250 same kind of european headlights and uh, of course oliver put their own grill set up on it which that's where we are with freddie we're still working on the grill but anyway it was available the 1450 you could get it in a front wheel assist i've seen some of those this one has actually which is kind of odd i should have talked about the transmission on the 1250 but i didn't this has a seven speed transmission. That's kind of an odd number really, but it is. You can get in seventh gear from both ranges and you can get in reverse uh, in both ranges, but a seven speed transmission, two, two speeds of reverse. Uh, this has an independent PTO, which is something that uh, of course fit well in the Oliver lineup. And then this also had this, uh, <coughs> which freddie has and we've never used or tried this ampla couple deal which is like a high low but i don't know that it was met with great success when it was new even so <laughs> but anyway the 1450 came on the scene in 67 i believe and and they made them till 1969 so a much shorter run than the 1250 uh and these <laughs> had the bad misfortune uh well they were only available as diesels and their main failure also was head gasket problems you had a head gasket leak and then when you went to take the head off you twisted off a head stud and then guys had tried drilling them out and then you'd end up busting through and then the block was pretty well junk so that was the failure point of these other than, other than that, you know, immediate death that could happen at any time, 
this is really a nice little tractor. It's a strong little horse for the size it is. I mean, it's got some guts to it for what it is. And uh, so anyway, like I said, the 1250 and the 1450, they just were not what they could have been. They, they, I think they cut some corners to get stuff going, like with that military surplus engine in the 1250. And they just, I don't know, they, they ruined... They did a lot of damage to their reputation right away, which they later redeemed on the later ones, but still. So basically, what happened was they decided, we got to do something, redesign, because this ain't working. So in 1969, they majorly changed things, and we will go back to the 1365 to explain because it's very similar to what I'm talking about. So, in 1969, which should also ring a bell in Charles City Oliver uh, history, was the same time that the 55 series was coming out. So, they thought, we've got this 1250, it's garbage, uh, from about here forward. So, what can we do? Well, they majorly redesigned it. And new for 1969 was the four, it was a Fiat 450. But they labeled it here, it was an Oliver 1250A. And this decal said 1250-A. Literally, I've seen one of these in my life. I, they're not that common. I think it was only a one-year deal because remember we were 69 was becoming 55 series So they kind of kicked this little feller out <laughs> and then changed it later, but that's okay 1250-A looked very much the same identical body style as this 1365 uh, This is the body style the sheet metal the 1250A was a three-cylinder tractor and and so you ask yourself okay when they made that 1250 how did they come up with 1250-a instead of like filling in why didn't they make it like a 1350 because we had a 1250 and a 1450 but no 13 well cockshut actually did make a 1350 which was a repainted moline and I've seen a few of those. I'd like to find one of those. I think it's kind of a neat looking tractor. I think it's basically like that Jetstar Moline that I'm working on over there at that other place. It looks kind of like that. Uh, Moline Dan can kick in if he knows for certain. Uh, but anyway, so they didn't, they didn't use that number. So they made a 1250-A because it was physically about the same size as the other 1250. So now we have... Uh, you know, a little three-cylinder diesel, and it had the cab fuel system, which was much more common than some of the other stuff they were using. And then they went to this setup with the LUK clutch to get your live power. That kind of proved maybe to be a, a bad deal in a way, because unlike these uh, size where they had the, the handle, that was the killer for the uh, engine on these tractors but you know two-stage clutch is not an uncommon thing to have in a utility tractor so that was an improvement over the stuff that they had going on but anyway it was a better engine and it was a better uh, fuel injection system and it, it just was a much better little tractor that lasted a long time basically the design because that's what continues on as we go so I think, I mean, if you look at the two side by side, a 1250 uh, and a 1250A, they don't look anything alike. The 1250A looks like this and the other 1250 looks like Freddy there. And I think they probably did that on purpose just so that people would maybe not associate the two tractors with each other because the, the regular 1250 was starting to get a really poor reputation. So, uh, you know, maybe the different sheet metal was a, a good thing too so after just one year of that uh i think probably like not, it might have still been in 1969 and not even 70 they changed uh the 1250-a became the 1255 so then you know 
that's more in line with the 55 series it gets kind of confusing after this because of all this other stuff so 1255 in about let me late 69 70 but then in 71 it became the 1265 and that's kind of a confusing thing why we did that but i i, I kind of get it so here's another thing i guess you need to know about fiats if you're looking to collect the lines okay 1250 and regular and the 1450 were kind of a flop i mean that in a lot of ways they're just they had a lot of troubles and people were not into it they update the 1250 first 1250-a then it becomes the 1255 now what do we do with sizes well this is where it gets kind of hairy with the decision they made they needed to have a another size so what they ended up doing <laughs> was if the 1250a was a 450 fiat they imported a 550 fiat which is the next size up and that is what became the 1355 1355 which is the same as like the heritage tractor it is a 1355 which is physically just like this one so in about 1970 if you went to a dealer and you wanted to buy a utility tractor you would have had the choice between a 1255 and a 1355 there was no 14 size at that time when they were labeled as 55 series 1255 1355 that was your two choices so it stays that way until like what did i just say a minute ago 71 or two 71 i believe okay i made some notes i try not to be totally wrong but i'm probably still wrong about some stuff so 71 1255 1355 get renumbered it's kind of strange why they didn't just make improvements and add and leave it the same number but i guess they wanted to be i don't know so they became the 1265 and the 1365 and i guess the reason they did that was because the two fiat tractors they were importing changed so the 1265 if i have this right was a fiat 480 and the 1365 early one was a fiat 600 and then later it became a fiat 640 that they were importing and uh, so now we have in 71 1265 1365 but we don't have anything in the 14 number range so what to do well they decide that they're going to import the fiat 750 which becomes the 1465 and it was from about 73 to 75 and uh it, i mean that was a it was basically it's like the replacement for freddy it's a it's a pretty good size utility tractor i don't know if i wrote down how many horsepower we consider that 77 horsepower so that's a pretty good size for a standard utility tractor that's like a 1650 i mean but in a utility tractor style size and if you look at a 1465 it shares very much of the back end features as freddy the 1450 there's a lot of pieces very much more similar between a 1450 and a 1465 than there are between the 13 sizes and everything else which has its good and bad and of course during all this going on you could get these tractors as cock shuts too so in basically now if we go up to the mid 70s like 73 74 75 if you went into the dealer now you have your choice of a 1265 1365 and a 1465 and all is right with the world except for the fact that very soon the oliver paint is going away so now what is going to happen well white continues it on because these little tractors at one time i'm trying to remember what i read once i can't find that the specs on that but they had a tremendous amount of the market share around the world they were really uh 
like these 13 size especially were very good little tractors so they kept it up and they did eventually renumber them to 70 series so then you could have a 1270 1370 1470 and i think that was probably in like the 76 range 1975 76 i know that the red ones that were sold like in canada they were pretty all they were all labeled as the 70 series like you see them that even i'll try to put pictures in they would just have red paint and say white and then say whatever but they had the later style grill because right after the 1365 the grill started to change the design from this to the grill design like what that this one's twin that we went and looked at that time it has that other style grill and that was the the more fiat grill right out of the box they quit doing the oliver design updates to it and just left it like it was so when you find the 70 series tractors mainly in canada uh let's see do i have that written down the uh I, up till 76 because that of course 76 is the last year that anything was in its original colors as in what i'm saying moline yellow uh cockshut red or oliver green 1976 after that everything became silver and we had whites so in 1976 what do we do well they uh get rid of the 55 65 70 series numbering system and we go on to having two models. We have the 2-50 two, two white, which is a Fiat 540. And it is like the replacement for the 12 size of these tractors. And then we have the 2-60, which became the replacement for uh, the 13 size tractors. And... Uh, then basically the 14 one went away. That pretty well covers what you would see around your travels here. You, you will see some 250s and some 260s. They did make an oddball thing, but I thought it was only made in Canada. And I'm not exactly sure if any of them made it over here or not. I'll put a picture in. But it was called the White 700. And it's a square boxy looking thing. And that would have been like the size replacement for the 1465, 1470, because it was like a 780 Fiat, I believe. And it looks very much body style like those Heston tractors. When, when the Heston tractors, you've seen those out and about, it was very much like that. Those are Fiats, and the white 700 uh, was basically the bigger size. And like I said, I don't know that I have ever... I don't know that I've ever seen one in the United States. I, I would like to find one just because it's something different too. But I don't think I've ever seen it. So. so I'm not up on exactly the end date. But sometime in like the in the very late 70s, probably like 8, 78 or 9, that was when the white and fiat partnership was over. It was... Uh, I don't know who ended it or why. I would assume it was maybe the same type of deal like the David Brown. If if uh, Fiat had a chance to do business with somebody who wanted their full line like Heston, I, I, don't, I don't know what the deal was or if White just really screwed up because these were good little utility tractors by that time. And uh, they had a whole line of them. I mean, they could have imported all of the, to match like with the 700, there was a whole series of tractors. And then uh, after that falls through, then that's where we get the Iseki built tractors. So you see like a 2-65 or 2-75. I put a clutch in one of those one time that was front wheel assist. Uh, those were Japanese tractors. And they even had, they imported little ones of those. That's why I'm so puzzled why they didn't just keep with the Heston line and go, or the, not Heston, but the Fiat line and import all the sizes because in the Iseki ones you see 2-30 35 you know whatever 60 I don't know all those little sizes I've never got into those yet I tried to buy one a couple years ago I was going to mow my yard with it but didn't get it done but so if you're looking to find you a complete set of these green ones 
or the the progression you know I, you could pick any color because they even made them as molines yellow some of them and you know cockshut red but if you wanted to just let's just say pick one color and go with it like if i wanted to get all the green ones they made all the green fiats you would have to have a 1250 and a 1450 and you could choose whether you also wanted to have you know if you really wanted to be full you'd have a gas and diesel version of everything because they were different but let's just stick with the numbers themselves so you get the idea so 1250 a 1450 then a 1250a then a 1255 and a 1355 that would be five tractors and then 1265 1365 1465 then you would have a 1270 1370 1470 that takes us up to what 11 of them i think and then uh you go on into the whites a 250 a 260 and the 700 so now we're up to 14 different models and then if you really wanted to get specific you could collect them in all the colors and go on and so on and so forth so but if you just wanted your one line all the way from the beginning time they made them to the end like in the green ones you would be it would be about 14 tractors so you'd have all the sizes and variations but uh you know like i said you could if you really wanted to be a fiat collector you could get them in front wheel assist versions and two wheel drive versions and find the vineyard ones and the orchards and the gas and the diesel and all that stuff uh you know i guess another thing i mentioned but didn't really talk about was when they did you know when they went to the 1250a we were, we're talking diesel from then on there was no like you didn't get a 1250a gas you didn't get a 1365 gas that was it was diesel after that and i think that eliminated a lot of their problems these were pretty good little motors and like i said these were excellent utility tractors much better horse than one of these i believe i mean nothing against these this is a cute little thing and solidly built but it just is nothing compared to one of these i mean this is a much uh more modern tractor that really once they got this design nailed it lasted for years and years and years and they're still using variations of it today so a very good uh design finally after they got all the kinks worked out and figured out what was bad the only 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 thing about these and i've talked about it before but i'm going to say it again so that you know the only thing about these that was a killer was this handle right here if you had one and they had the handle like this that is what ruined these tractors people when you shift the power takeoff you are supposed to pull this up shift the power takeoff and then put this down and the same way when you're done you want to shut the power takeoff off you do this pull it out and then push this back down which it's spring loaded there we go guys didn't want to do that i don't know why that was such a hardship but to shut the power takeoff off they just do this and drive all day well while you're doing that it's shoving that one stage of the clutch forward and that constant pressure against the main bearings was eating into the block and eventually after hours and hours and hours of that it would ruin your motor and that's what happened to this tractor i showed you that block in the video where we put it together <laughs> it was eight so far into there how did you not notice it was making noise you know so if you have one of these you have a good little tractor as long as you use it properly and do not run with that handle up because you'll kill it but other than that i mean i've heard guys running them ten thousand hours with no troubles i mean they're just good little tractors and a lot of the parts are still available there is some frustration in that you can't find quality you know as we found like with this i've replaced this twice already but uh yeah it, it, they're good little tractors i like to drive them i'm not always a fan on any of these little utility i don't like tractors where you have to sit over top of the hump like this and straddle the transmission and all that but but as far as once you're on this it's a good little tractor and uh i highly recommend to anyone who who is looking for a utility tractor uh a fiat built tractor is not a bad choice as long as you get one that has been taken care of and not 
not on the verge of death but uh and i'm talking when i say get one i'm talking like this body style anything from the 1250a and newer is good if you are i would not recommend a 1250 or a 1450 for anybody who wanted a tractor that they wanted to use every day you know i want them because i'm a collector and have this disease but it, a 1250 or 1450 would not be my choice for everyday hard use just because there's not that many parts out there and they're going to give you trouble so find you one like this a 13 size i think is the winner because there are so many parts available for these they're a nice size and you will be happy with it it's not a a uh a bad decision or a bad purchase so if you are looking for utility tractor uh i would not shy away away from these i like my charles city built little tractors but to be honest they, they just are not they don't have as much stuff as the as the little fiats here do you know this has more power it has more speeds uh it has remote hydraulics pretty well right out of the box i don't know that i've ever seen one that didn't have it in this series but uh anyway it's got the diff lock and it's got this is the thing that i like so much better about it it's got a handbrake that you can get to why in the world they never figured out a way to put a better handbrake on these i will never know because that is my biggest frustration with these uh super 55 and 550s when you're using it and i use this one about every day i gotta shut it off if i want to leave it sit on an incline because i, I i'm not it's just not i don't like bending all the way down i got to do some kind of acrobatics to reach these locks because you got to hold it down with your foot and then push this in it's not even like the uh well where's one at like on this body style tractor at least you can kick the lock with your other foot and you don't have to contort your body to do it but uh that was a big a big failure i think of something as far as convenience that they could have done and just didn't do but parking brake should not be the only reason you choose something these of course are very reliable parts are not an issue so you know if you want something that you want to use every day and then also be able to go to your local napa and get all your parts the same day you know points condenser whatever you need filter filters and things like that then yes you probably want one of these super 55 or 550 but uh, uh like i said i think that the fiat's got a bad rap a lot of it is because of the earlier 1250 and 1450 and then a lot of it is people they don't consider them real tractors but guess what they are and there's probably i bet there's more fiats built in the world than there were ever were oliver tractors of any size so you know don't give them such a hard time they're definitely part of the oliver history and story they were in the line for a good long while and uh they became something that uh i'm proud to own i'm not uh disappointed with these at all and i will own more not just because i'm a collector but because i actually like them they're fun to use and uh hey like i said it's part of the history so i'm hoping that maybe this video made enough sense where people can understand you know what the whole line was that was available it's just so that it answers some people's questions because i always get questions all the time and i've had people say how many more do you need to get the whole set well quite a bit i have three and it takes what did i say 14 to get all of the sizes so yeah we got a long way to go on that but anyway hope this was helpful as always if you like the videos give them a thumbs up leave a comment uh, all that stuff helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.